so we went in and had a look and we thought, oh no, <laughs> this is like, this is the end of the earth. This is like as hard as you can get. This is hyper arid and it's 10 acres of almost dead flat, completely salted landscape, 400 metres below sea level, the lowest place on earth, two kilometres from the Dead Sea, right, to about two kilometres where Jesus was christened. Hardly got any rainfall. We've got temperatures in August that go over 50 degrees. Everybody's farming under plastic strips. Everybody's spray, spray, spray. Everybody's putting synthetic fertilizer on. Overgrazed with goats, just like maggots eating the flesh off the bone, down to the bones of the country. Literally like maggots, giant maggots eating it to nothing. So we designed up a system that would harvest every single bit of rainwater that fell on it. On 10 acres, there's one and a half kilometers of swale water harvesting ditch on contour. And when they're full, one million liters of water soak into the landscape. And they'll fill quite a few times over a winter. And then we heavily mulch those swales with organic matter, which was trash from organic fields nearby. And we put that almost half a meter deep so we saved that and mulched our swales, which are about two metres wide and half a metre deep on the trench. Then we put micro-irrigation underneath the mulch. And then on the uphill side of the water harvesting trench, we put nitrogen fixing, very hardy pioneer desert trees, which help shade and reduce wind evaporation and also put nitrogen into the, into the soil and structure the soil for us. And then on the lower side of the trench, we put uh, fruit trees, majoring in date palms as the long-term overstory in the end and then we put in figs, uh, pomegranates, guavas, mulberries, now some citrus. Within four months we had figs a metre high with figs on, which is impossible. We've done a course, male and female course, trained up some locals and we got a translator who's working for the project. He had his degree in agriculture in the Jordan University. And he got onto his mates and, and said in the agricultural department, well, you said we couldn't grow figs, we got figs growing and we got figs on them. You better come and test the soil because no matter what you say, we're either growing in salty soil, what we shouldn't be growing, or we've desalted the soil and we'd like to know what we've done. Um, they came in and the salt levels were dropping. So they became interested. The salt levels were dropping around the swells. They said you must have washed it through. See, normally you put a huge amount of water on and wash the salt through to the lower levels, which just makes the groundwater more salty. In the end, you'll salt it 20 metres deep if you keep doing that. And then it will take a thousand years to recover. And we use only one-fifth the amount of water. So the water, they thought we'd washed it all through. No, we used one-fifth. That really got them when they realised how much water we hadn't used. We, with the same amount of water normally used on that much area, we could have done 50 acres. Originally, people laughed at us because we didn't put straight lines in. We went on contour with these swells. They thought, why don't you put, so you've got a bulldozer, you can flatten the desert, you can straighten it. So we want to go on contour because we've got a longer edge and we harvest the water passively. Then we planted more non-fruiting trees than we did fruit trees. So they laughed at us. This is what we planting done productive things, more than productive things, what's the point, you know? In, in soil that won't even grow anything, so, you know. And then, and then we covered all the inside of the swell with a huge amount of mulch, where they scrape all their organic matter off and burn it, like most traditional agriculture. In the middle of winter, we got a funny email saying, we've got a problem, we've got mushrooms growing in the swell. Well, they called it fungus, but when we saw a photograph of it, it was mushrooms, because they'd never seen mushrooms, because they never had that much humidity in living history in the soil. And when you open up the mulch, there's all these little animals there, you know, there's little insects and the soil has come alive. And the fungi net that's underneath the mulch is putting off a waxy substance which is repelling the salt away from the area. And the decomposition is locking the salt up and the salt is, is not gone, it's become inert and insoluble. So we could, we could re-green the Middle East, we could re-green any desert and we could desalt it at the same time. And, and, and if we can do it on an insignificant, flat, little bit of 10 acres of flat de desert, if you give us something with catchment or a wadi or a you know, canyon or any of those erosion gullies, we can turn it right around completely. You can fix all the world's problems in a garden. You can, you can solve them all in a garden. You can solve all your pollution problems and all your supply line needs in a garden. 
And most people actually today don't actually know that. And, and that makes most people very insecure.